Welcome to part two of our series, where we're talking about creating your first robot with ROS and Ubuntu Core. In part one, we discussed all the hardware necessary to follow this series and introduced Ubuntu Core, the operating system for IoT devices. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the robot operating system, or ROS, and we'll use it to move our robot. We'll be using ROS throughout the rest of the series. By the way, remember that this is also a blog series. The link is in the description. So what is the robot operating system? Well, at its simplest, ROS is a set of open source libraries and tools meant to ease development of robots. It also provides an infrastructure for connecting various robotic components together. In the CamJam worksheets, we've been doing everything in a single script, controlling the motors, reading from sensors, etc. It gets more complicated every time we add something and changes become harder to make. ROS provides a communication infrastructure that allows you to extract different logic into their own modules and have them communicate with each other in a standard way, making changes easy. This will all make sense once we dive in, so let's get started. The first step is to install ROS on our Raspberry Pi. There are a number of supported ROS releases, but we're going to be using the long-term support release called Kinetic. Let's SSH into our Pi and get into our classic shell. Kinetic's installation guide, which we're following here, is linked in the description. ROS maintains their own Debian repository, which we'll need to add to our system. Now we'll re-index all the repositories we have configured since we just added one. Now let's install ROS. As you see in the install guide, there are a bunch of options here. Let's install the smallest, most bare bones one, ROS Kinetic ROS Base, which will take up around 700 megs. We're also going to install G++, which is still required even though we're writing Python. At this point, ROS is successfully installed, but none of its tools are available to run. That's because ROS installs itself into what it calls a workspace and provides a shell script that activates that workspace. We can make sure we activate that workspace upon login by adding it to the bashrc file in our home directory. All right, now it's time to get to know ROS. One of the reasons I like ROS so much, and I think one of the reasons it's so popular, is that their introductory documentation is fantastic. They have a phenomenal set of tutorials linked in the description that take you from knowing absolutely nothing to feeling more or less comfortable with the entire system. Each one is easily digestible in a few minutes. Because they are so good, rather than try and duplicate their hard work here, take a few minutes now to start at the beginning and go through them at least until you complete number 13, examining the simple publisher and subscriber. You'll notice that there are two parallel tutorial tracks, one that uses C++ and one that uses Python. We'll be using Python through this series, so you don't need to worry about the C++ ones unless they interest you. Come back here when you're done and we'll continue. Now that we've gained some familiarity with ROS, it's almost time to make our robot move using it. However, there's something we need to do first. Back in CamGen worksheet number one, they mentioned that, I quote, When the Raspberry Pi was first released, some of the important libraries were only available for Python 2.7. However, almost every library, and all the ones used in these worksheets, are available for Python 3.2. It has been decided that all code for this educate will be developed for Python 3.2. Unfortunately, the Python bindings for ROS are only officially supported on Python 2, so we need to use Python 2 from now on instead of Python 3. Now don't worry, all the code from the worksheets should still work, but it means we need to install the Python 2 version of rpy.gpio. Alright, let's have some fun. We're going to rewrite the code we wrote for CamGen worksheet number 7 using ROS. We'll add some message handling to it, so using ROS, we can command the robot to move forward, turn left, turn right, and so on. The first step is to create a new workspace. You learned how to do this in the first ROS tutorial. I'm calling mine EducateBotWS, which stands for workspace. If you call yours something else, remember to change the directions accordingly. Now let's create a new package in that workspace. I'll call mine EducateBot, and it has three dependencies, ROSPy, the Python bindings for ROS, standard messages, the standard ROS messages, numbers, strings, and so on, and Python RPy.gpio, which we use for GPIO access. All right, time to write some code. Take the code you wrote for worksheet number seven and create a copy of it named driver node in the ROS package's source directory. The CamGen worksheets don't discuss this, but if we set this script to be executable, we can run it directly instead of calling Python first. Now open the driver node in your text editor. I'm using Vi here. This is, of course, worksheet number seven. Let's morph it a little. First of all, since this file is directly executable, we need to add a shebang to define the interpreter that will execute this program. Here we're telling it that it needs the Python command. Now we'll import rospy, which includes the ROS Python bindings. We'll also import the string message from the ROS standard messages package. We'll use both of these in a minute. We'll keep most of this, so let's skip straight to the bottom. 
Rather than just go through a cycle of moves and then exit, let's remove this behavior at the end and add some ROS code. First, we'll initialize the ROS node with the name driver. Then we'll subscribe to a string message on the command topic. We're providing the command callback function as the callback function, which we'll define in a second. Finally, we'll say just sit here and spin and process messages. This call will block until the node is asked to exit, like if you control C it. At that moment, it needs to stop the motors and clean up GPIO. Now that's pretty simple, so let's write that command callback function. Now this function needs to handle a string message. We need to take a look at the data in the message, which is the string itself, and take action appropriately. If the string is the word forwards, it needs to move the robot forward by calling the forwards function from the worksheet. Similarly, if the word is left, it needs to turn the robot left by calling the left function. And you get the idea. Now if the command isn't recognized, this function needs to stop the robot. Okay, save and exit. Let's build this workspace now. At this point, we have a ROS node created that will drive our robot as requested in a command message. It uses GPIO though, which still requires sudo. Instead of trying to get our workspace working using sudo, let's cheat and temporarily change the permissions of GPIO so that we don't need sudo. Note that this will be reset upon reboot. Alright, let's test that out. You'll need to open three terminals for this, each one SSH'd into the Pi and running the classic shell. First of all, we need the ROS master, otherwise publishers and subscribers can't find each other. So in one terminal, run ROS core. In another terminal, we'll need to activate our newly built workspace and run our driver node. Finally, in the third terminal, we can start giving our commands to make the robot move. Notice that the command topic is present. Alright, let's give it some commands. Congratulations, you're quickly learning ROS. That's it for part two. In part three, we'll break free of the CamGen worksheets and strike out on our own. We'll introduce the wireless controller and begin working on making our robot remotely controlled using ROS. See you then.